O brother, be faithful, soon Jesus will come, for whom we have waited so long. O soon we shall enter our glorious home, and join in the conqueror's song. O brother, be faithful, for why should we prove unfaithful to him who has shown? Such deep, such unbounded and infinite love, who died to redeem us his own. O brother, be faithful, the when city of gold, God. prepared for the name good is my and the angel. He's going to pray for us. Hello guys, welcome to Children's Children's Sabbath School. And who is going to pray for us? Let's pray. Oh God, we trust that you have to keep every your precious blood. Please pray all for us. Because in Jesus' name I have pray. Sabbath School lesson, we are going to sing one song. Welcome. Baby Jesus, baby Jesus, I love you, I love you, you are my Savior, you are my Savior, every day, every day, Toto Yesu. Toto Yesu, nakupenda, nakupenda. Wewe ni mwokozi, wewe ni mwokozi wa kila siku, wa kila siku. Okay. Is hey, thank you. Jesus Get Well Party. Children, what is the title of our story? Jesus Get Well Party. Our memory verse comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 36. Matthew, 20, chapter 25, 20, verse 36. 26. And Mark will recite it for us. It says, I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Amen. Amen. The title of our story I was sick and you looked after me. What does it say, children? I, I was, was sick, sick and you looked, looked after me. me. So Jesus had spent a whole day teaching crowds of people. As we know, Jesus used to teach crowds of crowds mm -hmm. of people, and a lot of people used to surround him so that they can listen to the word of God, the word of God. And after teaching them the whole day, Jesus got tired and he isolated himself. And went to Peter's house. Where did Jesus go, children? To Peter's house. house. The Bible does not tell us the reason as to why Jesus went to Peter's house. Maybe he was tired and he needed to rest. Maybe he needed to take a nap. Maybe he went there to take lunch. Or maybe he had some other reasons why he went there and we, are, we don't know. But maybe it is because of the all these reasons that I've mentioned. That's why Jesus went to Peter's, Peter's house. house. So when Jesus got at Peter's house, there was a problem there. There was what in, in Peter's house, children? A problem. A problem there. Peter's mother-in-law was sick. Who was sick? Ma Peter's mother-in-law. Mother -in she was very sick. She had this high fever. And this high fever could not go. A lot of people tried to come to, come to heal the, the mother-in-law, but they could not. The fever still remained so high, and uh, she was so tired. She could not even wake up. She could not manage to do anything. And she all, always lied down because she had no energy to do any anything. So Peter was worried. He was so worried and uh, he wondered, what can I do? Because my mother-in-law is so sick and I, can, I cannot do anything to help her. So Peter decided, I have a friend, Jesus. And he decided that I'll go and request Jesus to come and help me to heal my mother-in-law. So Peter went to Jesus. He told Jesus that uh, his mother-in-law is so sick and he has high fever and there's nothing he could do to help her. So Jesus said, yes, I'll go and help you. So Jesus went to Peter's house, and for sure the, the mother-in-law was so sick, she laid down there on the bed. You can see, this is Peter's mother-in-law. She's so sick, and she's lying down, 
down. She's so sick and the fever is too high. The fever is too high. Who among you has ever gotten sick? Okay, I can see all of you has ever gotten sick. And how did it feel? It felt bad. It felt so bad. You have high fever. You could not even eat. You don't even feel like taking water. You, 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 you feel so tired and so weak. So weak. So that is how the, the mother-in-law to Peter was feeling. And because of that, Jesus decided, I'm helping you. And Jesus looked at the woman and uh, he smiled. He smiled at the woman and uh, he commanded the fever to go away. And immediately, children, the fever went away. And when the fever went away, the woman got well. She, 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 she stood up and she was energetic and the fever has gone. And now she's feeling so, so strong, so strong. And she was so happy that Jesus did what? Healed her. And she decided, I'll go to the kitchen. I'll prepare a meal for, for Jesus and the other guests who came to Peter's house. You see, you see the miracles of Jesus? Hmm? He, he healed the woman instantly. And then as she came back and the fever went up, went away. So she went, she prepared meal for Jesus. And because of that, other people heard that Jesus brought a visitor in his house and this visitor healed people, healed the mother-in-law. And this word went over and over. One person told the other, the other one told the other one, the other one told the other one, and the message spread all, all over the village. So because of that, people came. People came to Peter's house. If, if, uh, if we, Peter has a friend who has healed uh, his mother-in-law, I will go there. Someone who had somebody who is sick, or, or people were sick themselves, others came to witness, they came to Jesus' house, and there was a, suddenly there was a big line in Peter's house waiting to, to, to see Jesus for healing. So all those people came, Jesus healed them one by one, one by one, he healed all of them. He didn't even get tired to heal them, we healed them over and over and over the whole day from morning until, until evening. So those people, all of them, they were healed. And they were stoned. They were so happy because of what Jesus did. And uh, because of that, all of them, Jesus was so happy that he was able to heal all of them. So this uh, story gives us a moral lesson that if we have sick people around us, what should we do, children? When we have people, sick people around us, what should we do? We should, we should pray for him. Yeah. Maya says we should pray for for them. Another one, what can we do to the sick people? We can help them. Mm -hmm. We can help them. Uh -huh. Hadassah, what can we do to sick people? Help them. We can help them as Hadassah as what? As sage, for sure. So we can, we can bring them water, we can bring them food, we can uh, help them, we can keep them company. And more, and the most important of all, we need what we need to do is to pray for, to pray for them, as Jesus did to the mother-in-law to, to Peter. Okay, children, the most important thing is to do what? To pray for, pray for them, as Jesus did what? As Jesus prayed for, healed the the mother-in-law to to Peter. Okay, children. So that is the end of our story today. And uh, before we finish, we'll sing one song. After that, uh, Maya will close us with a word of, of prayer. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our life. Help us. Help. Make people understand the story. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So children, this is the end of our story. Let's meet next Sabbath for another story. And may God bless you. Children, bye. 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 God bless you. Hello, church. My name is Beverly, and I'd like to do a song. Joyful, joyful, we adore the Lord of glory, Lord of love. Hearts and full life flows before thee, hail thee as the sun above. 
Smell the clouds of sin and sadness. Drive the dark of doubts away. Give our all the mortal gladness. Fill us with the light of day. Thou art giving and forgiving. Ever blessing, ever blessed. Wealth bring of the joy of living. Ocean depth of happy rest. Thou the Father, Christ the Brother, all who live in love and thine. Teach us how to love each other. Lift us to the joy divine. Teach us how to love each other. Lift us to the joy divine. Sabbath Saints. With me here is the primary class and uh, welcome to our lesson today. So who's going to pray for us? Leticia. Our Father who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name. Thy kingdom comes, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. For the day is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So, the title of our story today is... Who Cheated. Who Cheated. The title of our story today is... Who Cheated. Who cheated. And our memory verse today comes from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 4, which says... Love is patient, love is kind. Can we say it all together? Love is patient, love, love is, kind. is kind. Love is patient, love is kind. And our story today comes from someone who we all know. His name was Jacob. And we are going to talk about his journey and how he was patient and how he worked for God. So... Our story is about Jacob. We are, we, we are told that Jacob had lived in Laban's house for, an, for a couple of times. Laban was Jacob's uncle. And after a month, Jacob told Laban, Laban told Jacob, sorry, that he could not live in his house and work for him and not be paid. And uh, Laban told Jacob, that he should choose anything that he wants and he will pay him. But Jacob told Laban that he will work for seven years in order to get his daughter who? Rachel. In order to get his daughter Rachel. So time came by, years passed by. Jacob worked so hard and so faithfully and patiently. And after seven years, he was to be given his bride Rachel. And uh, during the wedding, as we have been told, that the bride were, used to wear heavy veils. So Jacob could not see who was under the veil. So they went home. And in the morning, Jacob found out that Laban has, had cheated him and gave him his first daughter called who? Leah. Yeah. He had given him his daughter called Leah. Laban, Jacob was so furious, he was so mad, and he went to ask Laban why he, had, he did that to him. When he went to Laban, Laban told him that according to their tradition, the, first, the second daughter could not be married before the first daughter. So Laban told Jacob to work another seven years so that he could get the wife, Rachel. And we were told that Jacob worked very patiently and he, he did his work well for another seven years to get his wife who? Rachel. And, we are, and the, the message we learned from this story is God helps us to serve others patiently and faithfully. 
for we from the story we learned that Jacob worked for a total of how many years to get Rachel? 14 years. 14 years, very good. And if it wasn't for God who gave him the patience and faithfulness to work for Laban, he could have let he could have left, but Jacob was faithful and what? Patient. We are told that in our life when we are faithful and patient, God will lead us and we will do the correct thing and the right thing without complaining. So that is our lesson for today. And uh, come back next week. We'll have another session for you. Let's pray as we close. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the session today. We thank you for what you have taught us. Be with us, guide us, and let our story teach us. And may we understand and follow into your ways. Help us to be faithful and patient throughout our lives. We pray this prayer, believing and trusting in Christ's name I've prayed. Amen. No worry and troubled, no light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior, and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Through death into life everlasting, he passed and we follow him there. Over us sin no more hath dominion, for more than conquerors we are. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying. His perfect salvation to tell. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. In the light of his glory and grace. Hello guys, this is PowerPoint class. My name, my name is Joseph Bolo. Let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for this day that you have given us. Thank you for our parents, teachers, and everyone. Just those who are here, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. So, Joseph, what is the title of our lesson? The title of our story is Death by Deception. Okay, that's wonderful. Joseph, tell me more about that story. It was time of King's Wars when David's soldiers were fighting the Ammonites while David stayed at Jerusalem. One day, David went up on his roof at the palace. Then he saw a woman. Then he sent one of his servants to go and ask more about her. When the servant came back, he told David that that woman is called Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah. David spent more time with Bathsheba at the palace. One day, Bathsheba told David that she was pregnant. Then David knew that he was in a very big 
problem and committed adultery. So he told, he sent a message to Joab that Uriah should come back from the battle. And then after Uriah came back from the battle, David told Uriah that he should go home and spend more time with his wife. But Uriah didn't want to go back home. Then David told him that he should go back home and take a rest. But Uriah didn't want to go home. So David sent a message to Joab that Uriah should be in the front at the battle so that he may be killed first. After Uriah was killed first, David had the information and Bathsheba and the but Sheba and David got married. Thank you for that summary, um, Jose. Now, in this story, we find that there's King David. What King David was, what the, in the story, did King David do a good thing or a bad thing? A bad thing. What did he do? He committed murder and he committed adultery. He committed murder and adultery. Why do you think he was doing that? He was the king, so he can do whatever he can. Yes, he can do whatever he wanted. But was it right before God? No. It was not right before God. And we find that when King David, now we find that when King David was following God, he was humble and he would listen to God and he would follow God's law. But now he was a king, he felt like he, was, he could do anything. And when you think that you can do anything, who is guiding you now? Is it God or Satan? Satan. Yes, it's Satan. And you know, Satan tells David, ah, you can have Bathsheba even if she's somebody's wife. And then she gets pregnant. And then he says, ah, he, gets, he thinks again. And Satan whispers again to him and says, ah, just kill Uriah and marry who? Bathsheba. But in all this, was God seeing him? Yes, he was seeing him. And he was not pleased with what he did. Right? Yes. And in the story, we know oh, there's a prophet who was sent to David. And he told David what you had done was wrong. And no. you're going to face the consequences. Even you, Joseph. When we're at home, at school, or even at church at times, do we do things which are not right? Yes. There are times we do things which are not right. Okay? Yes. Is, is that time you did something which is not right and it got you into trouble? Yes. Tell me the story. Just a summary. I stole biscuit in the house. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? Mom came to me. Your mom came to you. It was not nice. But when you are stealing the biscuits and eating them, they were feeling, ah, you are feeling nice, right? Yes. But the consequences of stealing was that you were beaten, you were given a punishment, and it was not nice. Even us, when we do things which are wrong, we always face consequences. You know some of the things that happened to King David after he had committed adultery with Bathsheba? Yes. Yeah, tell God, me. God forgave him, yes. but still God gave him punishment. God forgave him, but he had to face the consequences. Okay? Yes. Like that baby Bathsheba was having died. And then David had a son called Amnon. Amnon raped his sister. His half sister, because he was like, if daddy can do this, even me, I can do this. And then, now the sister who was raped had a brother called Absalom. Absalom killed Amnon because of what he had done to his sister. You see, when you do something wrong, the consequences are always worse. That's what happened. Okay, Joseph. Yes. So what you are being told today that is, when we follow God's command, we always be happy. And we'll be at peace. But if we don't follow God's command, we'll always face bad consequences. Okay? Yes. Can you summarize for us what we are being told about this story? Peace and joy are found on the path of obedience to God. He knows what is best for you and he has a wonderful plan for your life if you obey him. Yes, God has a wonderful plan for our life if we choose to obey him. But if we don't choose to obey him, we'll face trouble like David. David. And then, 
Can you read for us our power text? Our power text comes from the book of Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22. And it says, The Lord detests the lying lips, but he delights those who are trustworthy. Yes. You always have to make sure that you always do what? You don't oh. lie and you follow his commands. Command. Can you do for us? Or can you tell us the PowerPoint? The PowerPoint tells us we should treat others with respect by being honest and not taking advantage of them. Amen? Amen. So, you have a small sister, right? Yes. So don't take advantage and tell her, hey, give me five biscuits so that you can eat five biscuits and she eats two. <laughs> right? Yes. At school, don't take advantage of those who don't know something and you take and you do you, you take advantage and you have an advantage over them. Like for example, a teacher tells you, go and tell so and so to come so that I can do this, this, and this. But you say, if I go and say it, they are not there, I'll be the one who will be sent by teacher. There are times we do that, it is wrong. Or when you're told to write, are you a prefect in school? Yes. Maybe your friends are making noise, but because you're a prefect, you don't want to write them, you write others. That is what now God said, because you are, somebody would be lying. You do that? Oh, oh okay. <laughs> so, that is all we have for today. Thank you for listening to our lesson. And for us, it's bye. Bye. In the land of headless day lies the city for square. It shall never pass away, and there is no night there. God shall wipe away all tears. There is no death, no pain, no fear. And they count no time by his, for there is no night there. All the gates of Pal are made in the city for square. All the streets with gold are laid, and there is no night there. God shall wipe away all tears. There is no death, no pain, no fears, and they count no time by his, for there is no night there. And the gate shall never close to the city for square. Their life's crystal river flows, and there is no night there. God shall wipe away all tears. There is no death, no, death, no, no pain, no fear. And they count no time by his, for there is no night there. There they need no sunshine bright in that city for square. For the lamp is all the light, and there is no night there. God shall wipe away all tears, there is no death, no pain, no fears. And they count no time by his, for there is no night there. God shall wash away your tears. There is no death, no pain, no fear. And they count no time by his, for there is no night there. Hello viewers, welcome to our real-time faith class. Before we start, Beverly will play for us. Let's pray. Thank you God for this that you have given us. As we are going to start our lesson, may you guide us with the understanding. For this is my humble prayer in Jesus' name I believe and pray. Amen. Amen.
today is Bible study and prayer. Our memory text comes from the book of 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 to 17, and it says, All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching the truth, rebuking error, correcting faults, and giving instruction for right living. So, Lewis, during our le- in the study for today, there's a story. Do you mind telling us about it? Yes. Today, our story is entitled, We've Got Made. Uh, once they lived a soldier and a woman, and they both lived different places, and they were both far. And the only way they, they were communicating was through letters which passed through the post office. So each day they used to send letters, and they could receive all of them. Then one day, the soldier sent a letter to the post office. By bad luck, it got lost in there. Then the woman thought that the soldier might have forgotten about her. And after 50 years is when the worker in the post office got the letter that was lost in the post office. So when the woman started reading, Reading it, she started crying tears of happiness. This story is teaching us that the soldier and the woman communicated through love letters as so God has, is communicating us through love letter, which is the Bible. Why is it important for us to read the Bible? By opening the book of Psalms 119 verse. 105, and it says, The light is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So we can say that by communicating, when God is communicate, communicating to us using love letters, which is the Bible, it, it is trying to teach us the moral that without God, we cannot stay or live without his teaching because the world is full of sin. After his righteousness, he will honor and request as he sees his best. Amen. So let's open the book of Proverbs 30, verse 5. And it says, God keeps every promise he makes. He is like a shield for all who seeks his protection. Amen. I can add that you need to spend time communicating with God in order to keep the relationship alive. You need to take time regularly to nurture the relationship, friends who do not see each other communicate through letters, phones, call, phone calls, emails, and other ways. How is your communication with God? Are you reading the Bible? His letter for you? What is your res- response to God as you pray and study the Bible? The more you spend time with God, the more you get to know his will, the natural outcome will be that you will want to be more like Jesus and your prayers will be expressions of your trust in God. The fact that he will never stop loving us is right there in his word. In summary, the Bible is full of messages for you, not simply to tell you what to do, but to encourage you and strengthen you. You can read that from Romans 15 verse 4. There is a message in scripture reminding you that you are God's child. In It's in there. You just have to study and as you do, God's word will change you. That's why we take Bible study and prayers our lesson today. Amen. Amen. So that's all we have for you today. Till next time. Bye. Bye. Oh Jesus love. Sing of him. Sing of him. Love me, how he lay, oh, he lay, right what's above, and I don't care, I will sing, I will sing of Jesus' love, endless praise, endless praise, my heart shall give, he has died, he has died. That I might live, I will sing his love to me. Oh, the day, oh, the 
We see. 